Okay, the time has come to cook this squash. This is a winter squash that grew as a volunteer in my garden. If you've been watching the Random Stuff series, you'll have seen the progress of this. It, it's just a chance seedling that presumably survived the compost heap, grew to a plant and produced this squash. Nothing else but just this one squash. Today we're going to cook it. So I think what I'm going to do with this is halve it and bake it and then stuff it. So let's have a go at that. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with, uh, I don't know, somewhere about there. Yeah, I don't know about there. So it's worth noting, I don't know what variety of squash this is. It does resemble in some ways an acorn squash, but it's a bit longer than I would expect an acorn squash to be. And it's just a chance seedling that grew in my garden. So don't really know what it is. And it's probably either showing some characteristics of an, the parents of an F1 hybrid that I did grow, or it might just be some sort of natural cross anyway. But I've not been able to find a squash that looks exactly like this, kind of canary yellow and Looks a bit like a cocoa pod, I suppose, really. Now, I am going to save the seeds from this because if this turns out to be really nice, then I will grow some more of them next year. I'm just going to trim that up a little bit. Now, some people did say, <laughs> the internet being what it is, you get people concerned about whatever you do. And some people did say there's a possibility that it could be really bitter and that could be dangerous to eat. So let's just put that fear to rest right now. I'm not going to eat much of it raw, but we'll taste a little bit, a bit of it to see if it's bitter. No, it's not. I think it could be a spaghetti squash actually, because it has a, it has that kind of fibrousness to it. I was expecting a bit more of a cavity inside of here actually, but that's not a bad thing, I suppose, that it's got a fair bit of flesh to it. And it has got that kind of stringiness to it, although they always do in the middle part here. So it could be a spaghetti gourd, but we'll see. When we when we cooked it, we'll kind of know. I will clean and reserve a good number of those seeds, and we might grow them in future. Now I'm just going to give those some olive oil. And make sure that goes that oil goes all over them. A little bit of salt. Those are going to go into the oven now for probably three quarters of an hour until they're baked and tender. After about 40 minutes in the oven, they are starting to go soft and translucent, which is good. Now I'm going to stuff these with something I prepared earlier. So this is me preparing it earlier. So we'll need a stuffing for this winter squash. And this bit happened earlier in the day. I've got some red lentils, a tin of chopped tomatoes, a seasoning cube, a couple of cloves of garlic, an onion, and a red pepper. I'm just going to fry up the onion and red pepper and garlic to soften them a little bit and then I'm just going to put that in the slow cooker together with maybe a little bit of water if it needs it and we'll cook the lentils until they're tender. Oh Eva come on! I do have an abundance of basil from the windowsill infinite basil project so I'll be putting a fair bit of this in as well. So I'm just going to pick some of the nicer leaves from this lot. My onions and peppers are just starting to caramelise on the edges. You can just see a little bit of browning on the corners of the onions. You could caramelise these further. But I don't really want to. So now it's just going to be in with the garlic. And also while we're frying here, a little bit of smoked paprika. About a teaspoonful. Got to be really careful with this because this will burn really easily. So I've actually put that in. I've just turned the heat off because it burns really, really easily. And so I just want to give it a little bit of a toast. That's all. This tin of tomatoes is going to go straight into the slow cooker. The lentils will go in on top of that. The basil, straight in on top. 
the seasoning cube now this is a uh, one of these little Maggie seasoning cubes it's really just salt and MSG and a few little bits of spices just crumble that in and then my vegetables my fried vegetables in as well and I will just deglaze this pan with a little bit of water there's no point wasting that flavor that was kind of cooked onto the pan so I'm just going to give that a mix together in the slow cooker I think there's probably enough liquid there for the lentils to soak up. I'm going to cook that on high for a couple of hours. The lentils will soak up a lot of that tomato juice and, and kind of swell up. I'm not going to add any more liquid at the moment. I want a fairly firm consistency. OK, that's been cooking for a couple of hours now. And you can see the lentils have swelled right up. There's almost no liquid left. I'm going to stop there. I'm just going to taste a little bit of this just to make sure the lentils are tender. Mm -hmm. So we'll turn that off and let it cool. It will continue to absorb the moisture there and we'll end up with a kind of fairly thick mixture. That's what I'm hoping anyway. For this stuffing mix, I'm going to use one egg. And I'm going to grate in some cheddar cheese into here. So I'll weigh that as I go so I can tell you exactly how much that is. I'm going to kind of eyeball it, but let's have a look and see how much cheese that actually ends up being. About 75 grams of cheese, two nice big scoops of my lentil mixture, my lentil and vegetable mixture. Still got some of that left, which I'll put in the fridge and we might use that for something else. So just gonna mix that all together. So this is lentils and cheese and egg. It's a fairly loose consistency at the moment, but that's gonna solidify as it bakes because essentially it's a bit like a, a, bit like a quiche sort of mixture we're making here. And so that is going to go inside of these halves of squash and probably pile it up a little bit. I hope it won't run over. And then that's going to go back in the oven for about probably another 20 minutes or so. And quite near the end of that, I might grate a little bit more cheese on top. OK, those have been in the oven for about 20 minutes since I stuffed them and they're looking pretty well done. I'm just going to probe them actually just to make sure that the egg is cooked in the middle. Yep, so the inside temperature is well above 70 so the egg's fully cooked. I'm happy with that. I'm going to grate a little bit more cheese over the top and then just finish them off in the oven. Right, which one do you want? Uh, They're both about the same. Oh, yeah. That one? Yeah. This is a stuffed winter squash, stuffed with lentils and cheese and egg and stuff. We're going to have that with chips and a salad and some tomatoes. I'm just going to taste a little bit of this so I can give you my impression of it. Well, it's interesting how it's baked. It's almost like potato in texture. Let's just try a bit of the squash on its own first. Hmm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a potatoy sort of texture. More like a sweet potato, I'd say, actually. Really nice and flavoursome, actually. Sweet and tasty. And then together with this lentil stuffing. Hot. Oh. Hmm. That's really nice. OK, well, that's about all I'm going to cover of this. I'm not going to video the whole meal, obviously. But that was a huge success and I think I will keep those seeds and we'll try growing some of these in future. They're nice and tasty. So just to take a really good close look at this, it's definitely not a spaghetti squash because the texture of the flesh is, well, it's a lot like potato. It's a lot like sweet potato. So it's coming out in fluffy sort of chunks like this. So I would say that's probably not a vegetable spaghetti, but it's really nice. What do you think, Jenny? Yeah, I think it's brilliant actually. Yeah. So we'll grow some of them on, pur on purpose sometime in the future. Mm. Eva thinks so too. The closest thing I can liken it to is sweet potato, wouldn't you mm. say? Yeah. Mm. Which is good. I imagine that probably hasn't got quite the carbs of a sweet potato, though. It's probably a little bit higher on the fibre and lower on the carbohydrates. But yeah, I'm impressed with that. It's a shame there was only one. Yeah. A bunch of people have asked me over a fairly broad span of time if there's a Discord server for Atomic Shrimp. And for a very long time, the answer was, no, I don't even know what that is. 
Anyway, some kind folks set up one that was kind of unofficial. And in cooperation with these fine people who've set this up, I've agreed that this is the official Atomic Shrimp Discord. And there's various places to hang out and chat about the various themes of Atomic Shrimp and other random stuff. There's a link in the video description to that and in my channel about page if you're interested in joining us on Discord. So I thought it might be interesting just to do a quick update on this Moai head. Last time I mentioned this in a video, we were in the middle of a very dry summer and there was almost no evidence of any kind of patina or surface growth or anything on this. But now that we've had some more damp weather, it's interesting because there are things, albeit a fairly thin layer, there's some green lichen or algae or something growing on it. So, I don't know. I think it's probably just that when it dries out, it gets very, very dry. So, I don't think it's going to actually sustain a permanent patina. In the comments under one of my recent uploads, another one of those fake investment guru cluster bots showed up and started commenting. Now, I've done several previous videos about this, including one where my deletion of the payload, that is the part where the scammers provide WhatsApp contact details, appears to have triggered them to delete their own thread. Quite a few people said it was probably not my removal of the payload, but YouTube who deleted the thread. I love your optimism, never lose it. In my experience, problematic comments either disappear very fast or very slow, sometimes not at all. What I mean by that is I think it's reasonable to assume that YouTube's own automated algorithms process comments very soon after they're posted or edited. I think it would probably be computationally expensive for YouTube to be continually looking again and again at the same unchanged comments. So if they survive the first minute, that's probably the end of YouTube's attention span, at least from an automated perspective. After that, in my experience, the comments stick around for a while. If the channel owner reports them, they're immediately deleted. If someone other than the channel owner reports them, the response is not usually swift and may actually never happen. Anyway, in this more recent example, I posted some anti-recommendations and a bunch of people from the audience joined in with their own anti-recommendations, which was a lot of fun, thanks for this. Although it did make it a bit difficult to tell who was a bot and who wasn't. There was some slight evidence that these bots might actually be driven by humans. I've heard of cases where stuff that appears to be automated, like purchased likes and subs and comments, for example, are actually being created by humans in a room with a hundred phones on a rack in front of them. Artificial, artificial intelligence, I suppose. Anyway, we eventually got to the payload, which is the contact number for WhatsApp, and the scammers post these in a way that's designed to evade the automatic comment filtering. I can't show you that from this thread because I acted on it before taking this screenshot, but here's an example from a previous video. They typically mention WhatsApp and indicate that the number will be in the next post. This means even if I filter the word WhatsApp and all possible wonky spellings of it, it won't affect the post containing the contact details, which is what's coming next. They then post the WhatsApp contact details in a way that's designed to evade simple filters. YouTube's algorithm is quite good at filtering regular phone numbers already, so thanks for that, YouTube. But the scammers tend to use Unicode characters that have a numeric appearance but aren't just regular numbers. They then typically follow the contact details with another comment pointing upwards or referring to it. Now I'm going to show you how I filtered these on my channel, but I'm going to ask you please don't test this on my channel. I applaud curiosity, but when a thousand of you do the same curious thing, it causes me massive administration headaches. Anyway, in the video description below, you'll find a comma-separated list of the Unicode numeral types I've seen so far. If you have a YouTube channel, you could just take this comma-separated list and paste it into the word filter on your community settings, and that will cause the scammer posts to be filtered straight into the held for a review queue, where they're much easier to deal with in bulk. Now, I don't expect this list is complete, but I'll try and come back here and update it whenever scammers work around it, if I can figure out a way to defeat whatever they try next. Three more things. Firstly, which is just to reiterate, I'm sure some of you will be curious and want to test this by posting a comment here containing those characters. Please do not do that. It just creates a mountain of work for me. Nextly, thanks to many of your comments, I'm aware of the anti-spam script that Theo Joe has recently shown in one of his videos. I'll be checking it out very soon. And finally, lots of people ask why I'm not talking about this or that scam that they've seen a lot. The answer there is simply that I probably haven't seen it. Different genres of video content such as gaming attract different audiences and are targeted by different categories of scam. I usually make videos about things I have experienced firsthand so that I can speak from experience. If you haven't seen me make a video about it, chances are I haven't seen it. So I hope this has been useful. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.